Hey everyone, I thought uh do something a little different here today and do a little video review. Um, I get a lot of questions emailed to me asking me what types of packs or bags I use when I'm down in South America or you know in the States for that matter to keep my camera gear dry and you know out of the dirt and dust and the elements and things like that. So what I thought I'd do would be go through some of the packs that I've used in the past, uh, some of the packs I currently use and you know a new bag that I've been uh, using that I'm pretty happy with and I think it's going to be my kind of new go-to bag uh, and give you some of the advantages and disadvantages of of each of the bags so when I first started seriously doing photography and fishing um, I carried my camera gear in a backpack this is an Orbis pack that I actually purchased specifically to carry my camera gear as you can see it's not waterproof so you know disadvantage number one here uh, you'd have to put your camera in a dry bag in this backpack so anytime you needed to take a photo you'd have to wait over to the bank take this backpack completely off because it was you know hard to get into anything standing over the water uh, set it down open it up take dry bag out pull your camera out and take photos so what ends up happening is it becomes such a royal pain to get to your camera gear that you just ultimately stop taking photos when you should be taking photos not to mention the fact that taking any fish photos was almost always a two-man operation because someone would have to be holding the fish in the water in a net while you're over on the bank screwing around trying to get all your camera gear back out so while this has been a great bag for me for you know day hikes and those types of things um, ultimately for camera gear it didn't work out very well so what I went to next was a a bag from Sage called the uh, Typhoon this was the large size and as you can see it's a hip pack and it's also it was also fully submersible um, so advantage of this over the backpack was night and day that anytime I wanted to take a photo you just slide this around you know you had access to your camera um, slide it back you know you're back fishing again it also had these cinch straps on the side that when you tighten down it would really kind of lift this pack up on your back and kind of distribute some of the weight a little more evenly um, pretty big pack a lot of room in the front this uh, front section was waterproof it was not submersible but you can see you could definitely get a lot of fly boxes and, and different things in there um, this back portion was the submersible portion of it a little bit smaller but definitely big enough that I could get an SLR camera and sometimes even a, a smaller extra lens in it um, drink holders you know lots of room for for gear tip it all that kind of stuff um, ultimately it was a pretty good bag but there were a few drawbacks to it one of which was no padding in the in the bag in the bottom anywhere so you either had to put a little piece of foam in there to kind of cushion the camera or you know be conscious that when you sat down on a rock or something or you were climbing um, you didn't you know bang bang your camera off a rock and, and do damage the other kind of disadvantage to this was you know while this thing was fully submersible um, and I do test all these packs I always put a, a roll of toilet paper or a bunch of tissues or something in here and you know submerge them into a five gallon bucket or a tub depending on how big the bag is for several minutes and then take them out and dry them off and when you open it up if any water got in you'll know pretty quick um, you know this bag Passed that test with flying colors and I've dunked it on numerous occasions out fishing and you know everything's always stayed dry so that was good but you know the one thing you had to watch on that on this was this zipper here um, you can see there's this rubber gasket here and you really have to pull down pretty hard on that zipper to get that to seal over that rubber gasket and if you don't then it's not fully submersible and you know you have a hole about this big which you know pretty easy to get a bunch of water in especially when it's down about waist high um, as you can see I have a key ring on here that's because I've had a couple of these bags and uh, every one of them I've ripped the zipper pull off that came with it within the first week it was just rubber with a piece of string and you know this is so hard to kind of pull over this and then pull off of this um, that you you yank the zipper pulls right out so I ended up you know just putting key rings in them but you know other than this zipper um, you know pr pretty good bag but you know I, I wanted to kind of get away from the, from the zipper system on this so 
The next bag I went to was this Umpqua bag. Uh, this is the Tonga 650. Uh, very similar design to the Sage bag, but uh, you know, has the side straps and again, front waterproof pocket, you know, that, that can hold a lot of gear. But I guess two of the big, the big advantages of this bag over the Sage was one, the submersible portion was a lot bigger, so you could get a lot more gear, a lot more camera gear in the submersible portion. And it was essentially a, just a roll top dry bag. So, you know, you put those two ends together, roll them down, and clip these side clips down, and you're good to go. Fully submersible. There's no questioning, did I pull that zipper all the way? And, you know, again, I've dunked this on numerous occasions. Everything stayed pretty much dry. Um, both these bags, though, you know, after carrying all, carrying them around all day with a lot of camera gear and some fly boxes and stuff in them, I mean, that's a lot of weight on your back. Your lower back would start to bother you a little bit. So, you know, while I still use this bag, if I'm just going on like a half day trip or I'm not carrying a, a ton of stuff and I just, you know, want a little hip pack to carry, um, you know, I had to find something else that, you know, I could kind of distribute that weight a little bit more evenly, make it a little bit more comfortable on longer trips. So. Fish Pond actually came out with this Thunderhead uh, sling pack a couple years ago, and they have a whole line of submersible backpacks and stuff out now. Um, but this was this was a great bag. I mean, you know, not only did it, it take the weight off your off your hips of having all that camera gear down on your hips, and you know, put it up here on your shoulder and your back where it was a little bit more comfortable, um, but it also gets your camera gear, you know, up higher too, so you're you're out of the water, you know, when you're waiting a lot of times with those hip packs on, you know, you'd feel them start to float as you got a little deep. Um, so, you know, it gets this stuff up out of the water a little higher. And again, easy access, just swing this around, pull the zipper, you know, big pouch in there, um, all kinds of space in there for camera gear. You can see they designed, they designed this zipper a lot better than on the Sage bag. It has a T-zip on it, you know, metal to metal connection here. Um, I've had this bag for a number of years and you, you can really reef down on that zipper and uh, you know you can see that thing's still in one piece so you know it's, it's held up a lot better um, and also with the way this thing's designed too, having it up on your back that if you don't get this closed all the way around that gasket you know that gasket's now up here not down here so um, you know while you you do definitely want to try to try to get it you know all the way up over that um, if you don't, it's probably less of a chance that you're going to get water down in there than you would on the hip pack. Uh, also had a, a, a push through here for your net. Uh, you can get a long handled net through here. You know, pretty comfortable to carry a, carry a long handled net around with you. Um, the only real drawbacks to this bag, again, no padding. And sometimes like when I was steelhead fishing, I had a ton of layers on and you have your you know your wading jacket on and stuff especially if you had this you know this accessory strap kind of hooked here um trying to get your hands in your pockets could be a problem you know kind of blocked your pockets a little bit and then when you would sling this around if you had like a a chest patch on your on your fishing jacket or anything like that sometimes it would catch that uh, but other than that you know this thing i think was was really well designed i mean it's it's definitely waterproof. Um, I've beat the crap out of this thing. It looks like the day I bought it. Um, so it, it holds up uh, plenty of plenty of little spots on here to put different accessories and stuff on. Um, yeah, great bag from Fish Pond. But uh, recently I've kind of gone to a bag that I think is the best of both worlds. This is the new pack from Sims. This is the G4 Pro Shift Pack. Um, you know, again, best of both worlds here. So you have a full backpack, but you also have this hip pack on the side here that just has this little magnetic clip on there. You lift that up and you slide this out, and now you have a hip pack that you can put your SLR in. Uh, real easy to access. When you're done with it, you just slide it back in. That little magnetic clip goes down there and you know you're good to go um again full backpack in here so all kinds of room inside this bag 
uh, a couple mesh pockets for you know keys and things like that that you want to keep separated there's a front pouch on here to put like some snacks or you know gps maps whatever you need to get easy access to um net holder they have a tippet tippet holder here on the side it's vented in the back kind of keeps some airflow going keep your back a little bit drier and uh, it is hydration bladder uh, capable if you want to put a hydration bladder in it but usually you know i just use the there's two mesh pockets here on the side carry water bottles there's also these these side pockets here which are pretty deep they actually go all the way down to the bottom they're kind of handy for carrying fly boxes and stuff in them because when you have the bag on you know it's pretty easy to just kind of sling it around and get to that side pouch and then you know sling it back up over so um you know very well designed bag it's not submersible but it's highly water resistant to you know i'd say almost waterproof um i mean you can see how dirty this thing is i've been beating the living crap out of this thing because i really wanted to test it out before i gave anybody a review on it but uh i've had it in some pretty nasty weather it uh it stays dry i mean i've had it in some pretty torrential downpours but the one day i did have it kind of sitting like this and uh it absolutely poured and when i took the camera out of the hip portion that night i noticed that the strap on the camera was a little damp so when i got home from that trip i submerged this portion of the bag and what i found was that if you soak it and submerge it long enough you'll get a little bit of water that starts to make its way through these seams so what i did was i hit it with a bunch of like waterproofing uh spray like revive x um to kind of give it a little bit extra protection but uh you know if you're really worried about it you can put your camera in a dry bag and then stick that in here but you know really i think this thing's going to keep the gear pretty dry barring any you know major disasters like you you know you completely go for a for a swim for you know a couple minutes i mean i think if you dunk yourself and come out you know relatively quick i don't think you're going to have any problems um you know rainstorms you know i don't think are really going to be be much of an issue um i've been happy with it so far i'm looking forward to using it when we go out to yellowstone here in a couple weeks there's a lot of spots that we fish out there where we hike in several miles so it'll be nice to you know have a raincoat and some food and water and fly boxes and all the camera gear um and have a lot more support when i'm hiking you know have that weight distributed across my chest and shoulders and you know around my my hips too um it'll be a lot more comfortable and and easier to carry so that, again that's the the new uh g4 pro shift from sims i know tco has these in stock i think they retail for about 350 but uh pretty excited about this bag like i said i feel like it's the best of of both worlds of what i was using before so uh i hope that answers some of the questions that that you guys have had on different bags and you know carrying camera gear and stuff like that uh there is a contact box on the side of the blog there if you have any additional questions on just camera cameras in general or bags or anything like that you know feel free to shoot me an email and uh you know i'll get back to you as soon as i can um you know hope this helps and uh thanks for watching